Welcome to the Great Detectives of Old Time Radio. From Boise, Idaho, this is your host, Adam Graham. If you've got a comment, go ahead and email it to me. Uh, box13 at greatdetectives.net uh, Be sure to cast your vote for the show on Podcast Alley. Podcastalley.greatdetectives.net And follow us on Twitter at Radio Detectives. Well, before we get started with today's episode of Let George Do It, I want to encourage you, to pick up a copy of Tales of the Dim Night. My wife and I's uh, novel, it's, it's a great family story and a solid superhero comedy that plays uh, tribute to many of the great Golden Age superheroes. It's available as both a paperback and an ebook form. Uh, you can purchase it over at dimnight.com. Well, let's get into today's episode, Too Near the Sky. Personal notice, dangers my stock and trade. If the job's too tough for you to handle, you got a job for me, George Valentine. Write full details. Standard of California, on behalf of independent Chevron gas stations and standard stations throughout the West, invites you to Let George Do It. <laughs> Too Near the Sky, another adventure of George Valentine. Dear Mr. Valentine, my telephone number is Gramercy 3747. Can you remember that? Gramercy 3747? I've investigated you thoroughly, and I know you won't get it wrong. You won't forget. A man as good-looking as you are just couldn't be irresponsible, at least not about women, or maybe it's the other way around. It doesn't make sense. I, I know I don't make sense, but then if I did, that would show that I wasn't afraid, wouldn't it? And then I wouldn't be needing you, would I? Please, 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 the moment you get this letter, this is Sonia Belsing. Grammar says three seven four seven. But we've been trying to telephone you all afternoon, Mrs. Bell. Oh, I know, I know. My line's busy. It's always busy. But, my dear, you said Mr. Valentine. I'm right here on the extension, Mrs. Belsing. Extension? Oh, my. It's just like one of those quiz programs. Calling, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. They have a hard time getting answers, too. Uh, but, Mr. Valentine, all I want is for you to come to a party. Uh... You want us to come to a party? No one must know who you really are, so you'll be Mr. Valentine. Huh? Oh, but my cousin or something from out of town or Sioux City or Boston, do you understand? Well, oh, but Miss Brooks. Yes? He can't have a date, if you know what I mean. Oh. Oh, well, I guess I could be Mrs. Valentine. I wouldn't mind oh, no, that. No, 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 that's one thing you mustn't be. Oh. Uh, his sister, that's it. You'll be... Uh, Mrs. Belsing, please, you said you were afraid. Of whom? Of what? Why? Uh, there's an old, dear, dear friend of mine who's just back from Lake Tahoe for the first time in a year. Uh, Vivian Hargrove. She's giving a party in her pet house. The 32nd floor. That's the top floor of the Hargrove Sims building. Yes, okay. So much for that. Are you Would superstitious? You... Huh? I mean, it's rather a strange place. I hope it doesn't make you uneasy or nervous. Uh, Vivian, I mean. Oh, oh yes. And, and there's someone I want you to introduce yourself to. Eric Sims. But don't really say anything. You'll understand why when I meet you there. If we can't talk, I'll write a little note giving you instructions. Uh, Mrs. Belsing, I'd rather understand everything right now. So would I, Mr. Valentine, but there's no hurry. And besides, something has come up. Uh, what I mean is, by the time I see you, I'm sure I'll have the answers for you. I'm not a coward, and I've never made a false accusation in my life, but I am superstitious. But why do you want us there? Superstitious about what? Oh, uh, Mr. Valentine, murder, of course. Isn't that your business? Oh, push the button again, George. Well, I did, I did, but the arrow just stays there on the 32nd floor, crazy boy. But, George, we're late. Try one of the other buttons. Well, the other elevators aren't automatic, so they're all closed up for the night. Oh, fine. Me and my long dress and these high heels and their oh, no well, shoes. Oh, well, Angel, we take a case from a middle-aged maniac. We don't even know what she wants, so we shouldn't complain about walking up a mere 32 flights of stairs, should we? Well, I can't help it, George. This hike toward the sky gives me the queerest feeling. Yeah, no. 
Nothing is deader than an office building at night. And shadows. Lots of shadows. You know, I think if I believed in ghosts, I'd imagine them living in a place that... Huh? George, what is it? What? What? <laughs> it's nothing, Angel. Oh. You just bumped into a fire extinguisher. Oh. What's more dangerous to us is the sign over it. What do you mean? Yeah. It only says the 21st floor. Oh. Well, at least it should be a swanky party. Real honest to gosh penthouse, no doubt about that. I wonder. I wonder if there really is anybody up there. What we're walking up to. What kind of people... Oh, oh. Hello. Oh. Hello. I heard you on the stairs. Elevator stuck again. Yes, that's right. Well, this is the 31st floor. Mm. Uh, where are you? We're on our way to a party. A party? Yeah, upstairs, Mrs. Hargrove. At... Oh, I see. So, if you'll excuse us... We'll... Oh, no, no, no. Excuse me, please. I didn't mean to be rude or curious. You see, I'm the general manager of this company... These are the executive officers on this floor, and my name is Eric Sims. Mr. Sims. <laughs> come in, come in, won't you? Got a chance to catch your breath. Well, thanks, Mr. Sims, we will. I'm George Valentine, and this is my s sister, Claire. Pleasure. And you do look charming, Miss Valentine. Oh, thank you. Valentine. Uh, well, we're cousins of Sonia Delsing. Oh, of course. <laughs> Uh, Sonia's quite a person, isn't she? I love her. I suppose she must have talked about me. She usually rattles away about everyone she knows. Uh, no, no, I, I don't think so, Mr. Sims. Uh, but uh, coming up, we were a little curious. Yes, the, the size of your building. Oh, our company's just on two floors. Uh, real estate investments, Mr. Valentine. Oh, I get it. You built the place. Uh, that's it. And this is my bailiwick in here. Oh, my, what a lovely office. <laughs> Perhaps you'd like a drink after all that exercise. Oh, no, thank you. But I am warm. Do you mind if I open a window? Of course not. Whatever you wish. Uh, those last ten fights just about ruined me. Use both hands, Miss Valentine. What? Get the window on both sides. It sticks. Oh. It's been painted just yesterday. The entire office. Oh, yes. You know... I'm not sure I like the color, though. It was Vivian Hargrove's idea. I wrote the decorator from Tahoe, and he came storming in here like a wounded hen. I couldn't argue with him. What do you think, Miss Valentine? Hmm? Oh, oh I'm, I'm sorry. I wasn't listening. George, come here a minute. Yeah? Look. Just look down there. Hmm. Way up in the air, aren't we? Thirty-one stories. Might as well be 31 miles. Look at those cars in the street. They're so tiny. Mm -hmm. Say, uh, what's the overhang up there? Cuts off the view above. It's a guardrail. For the penthouse. Guardrail? Safety ledge, that's all. Just put up. Well, there certainly isn't one down here. George, look the way the wall of the building just falls off below you. Down, down, down. Oh, excuse me, oh. the... A draft. I have a little cold. Of course. I was just enjoying the view. Uh, look here, I, I don't mean to be rude tonight, but I've been finishing some special work on my desk. Yeah, to... sure, Mr. Sims, we understand. We'll go on upstairs to the party. Well, Sonia may have given you the wrong impression. There really isn't a party. What? Huh? It'll be just us, I mean... The few of us, the lonely people in the tower. <laughs> Don't let us throw you. We'll manage to have fun somehow. I'm glad to have you, both of you. Well, thank you, Mrs. Har Hargrove. If, if we'd known... And I love the way you're dressed. I'll bet it was Sonia's idea. She thinks people should dress like Englishmen in the jungle. Oh, that sounds awful. All mixed up, just like her. <laughs> well, Sonia's an Elsa Maxwell. Isn't she? 
Only I do wish there were going to be more of us. So far, it's only me and Rock Mullinoff over there. Well, don't let it worry you. Crowds scare me. You're silly if you're polite. See, Mr. Valentine, I know exactly why you're here. Oh, do you? Yes. And I think you're beautiful like all the rest of them she brings. But I'm not in the least interested in you. You're not? No. <laughs> I've only been back in town a few days and Sonia's been haunting me with men. Me, a married woman, you understand? Huh? I said me, a married woman, and I love my husband. Oh, shut up, will you? Shut up yourself! Shut up! Shut up! <laughs> well, uh, Rock Money knows quite a little gentleman, huh? Forgive us. He's my brother. Peter Cannon. And he knows not what he does. Hello. How do you do? Brothers and sisters should... Uh, pour yourself a drink, won't you? Not yet, thank you. You look pretty well poured. <laughs> Good guess tonight, Vivian. It's an improvement. Don't you ever get tired of the same tune, Mr. Cannon? Oh, no, it's the apartment. Tired of the same world. That's... Uh, let's be nice, huh? I'm a host. I'll show you around. It's my husband's apartment. Vivian, please. It is. She means Hargrove did the decor. Oh, well, it is rather an unusual place, isn't it? Yeah, strange decoration. Oh, I don't know. It's a hobby, that's all. He collected stuff. He does. Vivian. Uh, what's in all the cases here? My golly, George, look. Handcuffs, blackjacks, knives, dozens of them. Mayhem and violence. Oh, don't look shocked. It's just a hobby. Oh, but here, here. Out here are the real prizes. Masks. All over the wall. Yeah. Rows and rows of masks. But they're all... Yes, Mr. Valentine. Death masks. Sure, that's right. Some from the South Sea, some from Africa. It's a good collection. It's one of the best in the world. My husband is obsessed by the idea of death. Oh, cut it out, will you? Guy's got a penthouse. Why not be unique about it? Now, uh, some people like zebra skins. Well, he got a bang out of this stuff. He is. He's obsessed. Now, look. Look, even out here, the roof garden. You see the statues? Sure, it's wacky, but a hobby. One guy's hobby, that's all. Are you superstitious, Mr. Valentine? Are you? Are you? Well, I'm beginning to think maybe I am. Mm, feel the wind. Look at the stars. It's a penthouse with wacky decorations. And that's all. <laughs> Just picture a penthouse. Of course, Mr. Valentine, my husband is. Chimney's my husband is. Well, here, please be quiet, will you? Mrs. Hargrove, I, I know we've intruded and you don't want us, but let's get this straight. When I heard you'd been living in Nevada the past year, I naturally assumed... Oh, no, we're not divorced. The last time, Vivian, will you get out of that present tent? Take it easy, Buster. No. Her husband's been dead for the past six months. He says if you live too close to the stars, you've got to fall sometimes. And he walks out here alone. And he moves toward the railing. Like this. And he stands on the edge and stares down. And then, very smoothly, like Margo. a shooting star, aimed at the face. Mrs. Margo. What? Oh. Oh, Mr. Fellett, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. He's dead. I know he's dead. He fell. Well, there's no need for you to go along, too, you know. Oh, I won't. Forgive me. I'm not really out of my mind. Oh, no, no, not much. But you're going to be, Vivi, if you don't stop it. Here, please. It's this place. This crazy, haunted place. Sweet slice of heaven where just you and I. I killed my husband. That's what it is, Mr. Valentine. Six months ago, I killed my husband. We'll return.
return to tonight's adventure of George Valentine in just a moment. Winter weather in the West offers a grand variety of sports. But it nearly always means extra work for your car's battery. That's one good reason why you should rely on Chevron Supreme gasoline. For it's a premium quality gasoline, specially blended to give faster starts with less battery strain in the coldest weather. But equally important, Chevron Supreme is the gasoline that's climate-tailored. It's tailored to each different season and to the different altitude and temperature zones throughout the West. So wherever you drive, rely on Chevron Supreme to get the best out of your car. Faster starts, faster pickup in traffic, ping-free power on hills. Try a tank full tomorrow. You'll find you can't buy a better gasoline for today's high-compression engines. Ask for Chevron Supreme at independent Chevron gas stations and at standard stations where they say and mean we take better care of your car. Back to tonight's adventure of George Valentine. A penthouse, too close to the sky, decorated with weapons and curios and death masks. Sonia Belsing, who asked you to this strange place and this strange party that isn't the party, hasn't even shown up yet. You're not even sure why you're here. But if your name is George Valentine, you have a pretty good idea of what needs to be done. When Vivian Hargrove screams out that her husband is dead, that six months ago he fell 32 stories to the street, and then almost casually adds the remark that she killed him. Mr. Sims, what sort of a man was your partner? Hargrove? Oh, well, he drank a bit, like his brother-in-law Peter there. But he was big, hearty, the greeter of the firm. With an obsession about death? Yes. Uh-huh. And now his wife is... All... I really don't know Vivian very well. She's been away so much. Uh, see here, I really think it would be better if you and Miss Valentine would... Well... Yes, yes. Okay, we'll be going. Oh, how is she, Angel? Oh, hello, Mr. Sims. She's all right now, George. Uh, perhaps I'd better go Excuse in. Excuse me. Did you find the telephone, George? Telephone? Yeah, I did. I wonder if you'd mind if I went in to see Mrs. Hargrove, Mr. Sims. I'd like to uh, tell her good night. Well, of course. <laughs> In the meantime, I'll give you a chance to go over and pour some black coffee on those piano strings. You say you use the telephone? Mrs. Hargrove, when I hear something I don't understand, I like to get an answer fast. And uh, straight from the horse's mouth. In this case, the police, Mrs. Hargrove. Police? You said you'd killed your husband. Well, I didn't tell them why, but I asked them what happened. They say six months ago there was an investigation that your husband had committed suicide. Yes. Yeah. Well, I just thought I'd say it. But you really know it, don't you? Yes. It was very kind at the time. I first knew it when the wire came. The ranger had left it at my cabin. Wire? Ranger? I was up at Lake Tahoe. Didn't Sonia tell you? But why do you accuse yourself of... killed, I suppose. I was in Nevada because I was going to get a divorce. I wasn't patient enough. I left him down here alone with his strange obsessions instead of helping. But that's scarcely cause for... A feeling of guilt is a terrible thing. It gives you dreams. It's like pretending he's alive when I really know he's dead. But I didn't ever act this way or feel this way and... until I came back for the first time a few days ago. Why did you come back to the same place at all? Well, the furniture had to be sold, the apartment leased sort of business. I certainly don't intend to stay here. I wasn't worried about it. My brother was coming with me. Oh, yeah, that brother of yours is a big help. Oh, he doesn't know any better, that's all. It's just a building somehow. The tower. Even before I came back, I was a little nervous. I ordered my husband's old office, Mr. Sims now, repainted. So I wouldn't remember him. I started out in that office. I was my husband's secretary several years ago. But the things up here I had to face and I couldn't. All the souvenirs of death. I got so mixed up. Why, Mrs. Hargrove? 
Maybe because you still think your husband's collection was just a hobby, the way your brother said? You've never thought it was an obsession that led to suicide? I wish... I wish Sonia were here. She called from the drugstore if it were just the elevator. Oh, everybody's upset. Maybe no one close to him thought he'd actually do it. Only in your case, you can't see any other explanation, and so you develop all this stuff about your own... Oh, Valentine, no. No, no, Mr. Valentine, please. But you... No, I won't listen. I'm mixed up enough. I can't believe that. It had to be so All right, all right, all right, all right. I'm sorry. <laughs> You're afraid I'll go spinning off the handle again, I... No, no, skip it, will you please? I know the elevator wouldn't stop, Sonia. But maybe I should see about having it fixed if it hasn't been... I've already spoken to your brother about... Oh, oh, Peter doesn't know what to do. Down in the office is a separate house phone of the building engineer. <laughs> I'll run down and talk to him. Yeah, yeah, that might be a good idea, Mr. Pedro. <laughs> Give me something to do, you mean. <laughs> maybe. I'm all right, really, I am. But we'll do lots of things tonight. And singing and dancing, or we'll have so much fun. It'll keep my mind off this whole place. Go on, <laughs> And, Angel, we don't even know yet why we're here. Well, George, it wasn't just to take care of an hysterical woman. Sonia said she was a break... Come on. What do you think you're doing? Hey, 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 what is this? Look at him, handcuffed. I did it. Handcuffed? Did it. Get me what? out of these. <laughs> Valentine, take that key away oh, from me. Oh, no, you don't. No. Uh, English handcuffs at that. They're antiques. <laughs> hey, what... Now I'll try and find your key. All right, Buster. So you threw it to the birds. What's the big idea? I was just standing here of all the ridiculous <laughs> notions for a joke. Leave him here, Mr. Valentine, and come with me, will you? Come with me out to the elevator. The arrow points to the ground floor, you see? And earlier the one down there was pointing up here. So since then it must No, have... no, no. Look at this arrow. You reach up, you can grab it. Yeah. Yeah, it's swinging loose. It's been pulled that way. So nobody would guess... What do you mean? That the elevator isn't broken at all. But it's not downstairs. It's right here. Right here. Is that... Yeah. Sonia Bells. Yeah. Yeah, she's dead all right. Been dead for some time, I guess. Since before we got here... I... I, I was asleep in my room all afternoon. Oh, God, you take this? Oh. Oh, yeah. oh. It's a knife, huh? More stuff from that crazy collection. And, George, here's her purse. Yeah, we'll take a look. Right, it's the note. You know the note she told us she'd write, remember? To you with the instructions. Here, let me see that. Oh, no, you don't. Let me see it. I'm going to call the police. Here, tell them I... get going yeah, fast. No, now, stand hey. still, will you? She's calling the police. But i got to tell them that Sims did it. He did it. Sure, bright boy with the handcuffs. Who says so? Sonia didn't like him, see? She was afraid of him. She wanted Vivi to get interested in other men so Sims wouldn't try to get next to her. You make as much oh, sense. Oh, I know. I know I've been drinking, but believe me, nobody close to Hargrove ever thought he killed himself. And it drives all of us crazy. But his death masks were just a laugh, that's all. They were a big gag to pull at parties. Okay, Buster, Don't what? you see? Sonia was wise. She thought it was his partner, it was Sims, who murdered Hargrove. And I'm going in and help. Oh. Now, Petey, you're going to stay right here for a while. Pleasant dreams. Yeah, I talked to Lieutenant Riley. He'll be here as fast as he can. Well, let's see that note Sonia Belsing wrote. You know, George, it's funny. It was our instructions, all right, but she was going to fire us. What? Yes, it just says she's sorry to have bothered us, but she's decided to handle matters in another way. And, quote, don't say anything to anyone. Please, 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 Sonia Belsing. Huh? Darling, she must have been threatened. That's the only explanation. So she did know something. And look here. On the outside of the purse. Paint. <laughs> little spot of fresh paint. Mm-hmm. The same color as that office. Hey, Mr. Sims. Mr. Sims. Angel, where is he? Well, George, I've been at the phone. But he has handcuffs on anyway. What difference does that make? Well, he's gone. I know, I know. And I've been asleep at the switch. I let Vivian Hargrove go downstairs to that very same office. <laughs> it's Sims' oh! office, all right. Come on, through it's here. You're all right. Hang on, hang on. It's fine. Oh, it was trying to push me. Oh, 
Oh, George. Yeah. Tried to kill me. I was here in the office. He followed me. He had those handcuffs on him. He hit me with them. Come on, George. Take it easy. Take it easy. Now get away from the sill. It okay. was awful. He was insane. He knew, I guess, that he killed my oh, husband. Oh, Mrs. Hargrove, it's all right now. He knocked me down. And then he opened the window. I saw him. When I heard you coming, I screamed. The police. I sent for them. Too bad they couldn't have flown. Oh, Mr. Valentine. Now, look, Mrs. Hargrove, stop crying on my shoulder. If you live too close to the stars, you've got to fall sometimes. Stop it. His death was useless. And I'm sick of your acting. What? But if it hadn't happened, I guess we never would have caught you. Caught? Shit. You saved my life. What did you do, Mrs. Hargrove? Knock Sims out, have him ready, and when you heard us coming, give him the final shove so you could start screaming out the next act? Mr. Valentine, he hit me. He hauled me over to the window. He was handcuffed. George, that doesn't make any difference. You yourself... How did he open the window, Mrs. Hargrove? No, no, don't touch it. Police like fingerprints. Come on now, how did he open it? It was part of your own act to order this place repainted, remember? So the sash sticks. They always do. You've got to push on both sides at once. And how are you going to do that, Mrs. Hargrove? When you're wearing handcuffs. No, I'm an idiot. No, Peter. You've just been trying to dodge the truth. And after all, Sonia Belsing picked on Mr. Sims just as you did. Well, that's what she was going to tell us originally. Only then... The paint on the purse. Sonia got together with Sims. Began to realize what he'd already begun to suspect. That it was Vivian all along. That's when Sonia wrote the note we found, saying she'd handle it some other way. Oh, it's not easy for a best friend or a business partner or a brother to decide what to do about a woman they suspect of murder. I, I still can't see Vivian sure, doing it. Sure, sure, it's hard to face, Peter. But Mrs. Hargrove admitted to the police she wasn't really a Tahoe. She was down here. Yeah, yeah, I know. I heard her. But why? why? Well, maybe she was ambitious. I don't know. Secretary married one of the partners. He was going to divorce her, so she knocked him off. Half owner. Then six months later, she comes back with a neurotic act to cover knocking off the other partner, Sims. And she'd own the whole company. Only she realized people were getting suspicious. She had to get rid of Sonia first, and then in we walked. No wonder Vivian was so scared and upset. Hey, Peter, Peter, why do you keep playing that record? It doesn't bother me. So happens I like my sister. Yeah, kid, I know. Just picture a penthouse way up in the sky. George, I still get dizzy just thinking... Hey, that's not the line to remember, Angel. Mm -hmm. We can thank our lucky star that we're living as we are. Let's go, Brooksy. A man doesn't have to lift the hood of his car to keep it running, naturally. He can put some gas in the tank, forget all about the vital parts under the hood, and his car will run all right for a while. But if you want both safety and savings for your own car, it's wise to have your station man look under the hood regularly. At standard stations and at independent Chevron gas stations, the underhood checkup is part of their protective service. That's when they can catch a worn fan belt or leaky radiator hose, things that might lead to major repair bills. Another example is regular oil check. Maybe nine times out of ten, they'll tell you your oil is at the safe level. But when fresh new oil is needed to avoid costly engine damage, that's when protective service pays its own way many times over. A few minutes of your time tomorrow for an underhood checkup may save you hours of delay and expense the day after. So why not stop at an independent Chevron gas station or at a standard station where they say and mean we take better care of your car? Tonight's adventure of George Valentine has been brought to you by Standard of California on behalf of independent Chevron gas stations and standard stations throughout the West. Robert Bailey is starred as George with Francis Robinson as Brooksy. 
Let George Do It is written by David Victor and Jackson Gillis and directed by Don Clark. Also heard in the cast were Sarah Selby as Sonia, Robert Griffin as Sims, Lorene Tuttle as Vivian, and Jack Edwards as Peter. The music is composed and presented by Eddie Dunstetter, your announcer, John Heaston. Listen again next week, same time, same station, to Let George Do It. This is the Mutual Don Lee Broadcasting System. Welcome back. It's another one of those great um, atmospheric uh, uh, pieces that uh, really and truly no one else ever did uh, any better than uh, let George do it. Great mystery, great twist leading up to a fantastic conclusion. And it was a conclusion in another way. The last episode uh, with uh, Francine Robinson in the role of Brooksy. She was replaced uh, the next week by Virginia Gregg. And we've talked about and I think appreciated uh, the ability of Virginia Gregg uh, on previous podcasts. We'll talk a little bit more about her next week. But there's usually not a very, like, a very bright dividing line. Well, these are the Francine Robinson episodes. And these are the Virginia Gregg episodes. Uh, the talent of uh, Virginia Gregg, I think, tends to make the change almost uh, seamless. I do want to take this moment also to let you know, coming up this weekend, it's our video theater episode. And this one is one that Let George Do It fans will uh, want to take a listen to. Or watch, actually. Uh, Let George Do It never made it to television. However, Jackson Gillis did make it to television. And he took one of his uh, Let George Do It scripts, a fairly recent one, and made it into an episode of the TV show On the Law with George Graft. And so you'll get to see which one and see how this radio uh, program played out on television. Now we turn to listener comments and feedback. Mark has a comment on the episode we did from a couple weeks ago uh, called Sweet Poison. Uh, Mark, he says, I'm no detective, but I do own a cat. One thing I know about cats is, these, is that you shouldn't ever feed them chocolate because it can give them a heart attack. If I were faced with a cat who turned up dead after eating a chocolate cream, there's really no way I'd assume the chocolates have been poisoned. The episode even gets close to acknowledging how odd this is when Brooksy points out that cats don't tend to eat chocolate on their own, which is true. Uh, but that's the extent of it. Uh, you know, this is a good point, and growing up, uh, we did not have a whole lot of experience with uh, owning pets. We did get one cat when I was a teenager, but it was kind of an outdoor mouser cat. So it never occurred to us to feed the cat uh, chocolate. But my wife uh, uh, backed you up on that, or family having a much more extensive cat-owning history. I still think the story is somewhat uh, plausible, just because it's, it's a fact not everybody knows. It's possible the client wouldn't know. It's even possible that George Valentine wouldn't know. But uh, you, you may be uh, correct in terms of the story that one person who didn't know about cats not eating cho chocolate were the writers. Uh, thanks so much for the comment, Mark. Well, now we turn to Podcast Alley and a comment for, uh, from Tim. Thanks for the efforts. The shows are well selected. I hear some I've never heard before. MASH ran longer than the actual Korean War, and I've been listening to uh, old-time radio for longer than the 15-year 1945 to 60 peak. It's getting harder to find uh, fresh material. Every once in a while, I come across a gun smoke or let George do it that's new to me. I've stripped mine uh, Philip Marlowe and Sam Spade to exhaustion. I love Candy Matson best, but try to put a year or so between repeated listenings. Well, thanks a lot, Tim. I would encourage you uh, not to uh, schedule a listening to Candy Matson for uh, a little while yet, because... Uh, Andy Matson was coming to the great detectives of old time radio in about six months. And I'm glad we're finding some uh, fresh material you haven't heard. Uh, as I mentioned before, the uh, Adventures of the Abbott series that we've been playing on Monday, 
was not actually in circulation till uh, just this uh, century. While I always uh, like the opportunity to bring people their favorites, it's nice to give folks a chance to discover a new favorite. And I continue to be amazed and surprised by all of the uh, yeah, you know, little detective shows you run into where there are two or three episodes out there uh, that nobody ever talks about. And we really like to bring you those uh, forgotten treasures. Well, that'll do it for now. Thanks so much for all your comments, support, and feedback. We will be back tomorrow with uh, Sherlock Holmes. Uh, in the meanwhile, send your comments to box13 at greatdetectives.net. Become one of our friends on Facebook, facebook.com slash radiodetectives. And uh, give us a call, 208-991-4783. From Boise, Idaho, this is your host, Adam Graham, signing off.